Well, good morning and welcome to Grace Time. Happy 4th of July to you. How are you doing this morning? Well, grab a cup of coffee and take a seat as we discuss true freedom this morning. I am sure you, like me, and thousands of others have noticed a big shift in our society. You have probably noticed the commercials, the sitcoms, the movies, all promoting it and attempting to normalize it. It is these days and times in which we are living. The world demands freedom. They want whatever they want, and they want it right now. They want whatever they want, anything and everything, as they as they want it to be tolerated. The, but more than that, they want it to be celebrated. They want it to be spread and publicized. They want it to be normalized. Listen, there is nothing new to this. It may be new to our societies today, but there was a society of people 3,000 years ago doing exactly this. In Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. That is exactly the times in which we live uh, today, isn't it not? So we take God, uh, our prayer, and the Bible out of everything. Anything that condemns this behavior, because if anyone quotes from the Bible, it is going to intrude upon someone's freedom, or it will offend somebody. We cannot have this criticism of what we are attempting to normalize, can we? No, no, sir. <laughs> The world is beginning to say that Christianity is a crime as we see around the world and the world now will do anything to silence the word of God. Society wants to be free from any moral restraints and this is not freedom, mind you. This is just uh, living in the flesh on steroids. Sin will bind you, not set you free. I mean, if someone is a drug addict, nobody looks at them and says, they are, they are free, do they? They don't look at them like that. Sin is a bondage, just like that. People willingly behave in ways that are self-destructive, all because they want it their way. The world does not understand that living this way does not make them free. It, in fact, does just the opposite. Paul shares with us, how it is that we can be free. Paul knows this freedom firsthand as he accepted the free gift on that road to Damascus experience. And Paul then shares with us that all that we need to do is simply believe that Christ died for our sins personally, that he rose from the again the third day and God will save you from the wrath to come according to the riches of his grace. Talk about freedom. That is true freedom right there. But then the Apostle Paul tells us more in Galatians chapter 5 and verses 13 through 16. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another before lest you be consumed by one another, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, we need to recognize that this is a defining portion of Scripture uh, on how we understand freedom in the life of a Christian. We already know. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been set free. Paul has spent the majority of this letter to the Galatians calling them to live in the freedom that comes with faith in Christ. With his own blood, Christ has purchased for those who trust him a freedom from slavery to our sinfulness. You see, we are forgiven. Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 tells us there, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who do not walk 
according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In short, if you are in Christ Jesus, God will never, ever condemn you for any sin whatsoever. The condition of this statement, however, is crucial. Salvation is for those who place their faith in Christ. There is no other way, and those who reject this salvation will not be rescued from condemnation. This raises a new question, doesn't it? And it is the question that I believe Paul's enemies surely asked him. If there is no threat of condemnation of sinning, what is to keep people from sinning more? I mean, without a consequence, won't people just indulge in every kind of evil practice? Paul confronts this idea here. He wants the Galatians, or he warns them and he wants the Galatians not to use their freedom in Christ as an opportunity to selfishly serve the flesh, but only doing what feels good, you know, for themselves. Instead, they should selfishly serve each other in love. So living in the freedom Christ purchased should not be about focusing on ourselves. It is about seeing God's love for us and striving to serve each other with that same love. Paul then begins to warn the Galatians, and us, by the way, just because we are in Christ and free from condemnation does not give us a license to sin, so to speak. Why not just indulge in everything that might bring us pleasure? Paul shows us why that is a waste of God's gift of freedom here in our own lives instead uh, also. So Paul tells us to trade all of the law of Moses in for one word, law, love. Paul then quotes Jesus, you should love your neighbor as yourself. We should take the focus off ourselves and utilize the knowledge of what we would like in order to serve each other. Those who have been loved by God are meant to respond by loving others. Why is this essential for those in Christ? I mean, any group that is made up of people who serve only themselves will eventually fall into conflict with others and will inescapably get in the way of each other's agenda and the ability to perfectly meet their own desires. And thus, to always finding our way, we will e having our way will either leave us uh, biting and destroying each other, as Paul says, or to trample all over others' uh, desires or needs. And eventually... This will lead to the destruction of the entire group. And as James put it, a life according to the worldly wisdom of serving self does not lead to happiness. Instead, it leads to a lot of other bad practices, along with coveting, quarreling, and fighting. Paul says that we will end up devouring and consuming each other in order to try and get what we want. So what is the alternative here? To utilize our Christ one freedom to set ourselves aside and to serve each other in love? Listen, this will not only lead to greater joy for all of us, it is living as Jesus would, as we live free for him. And what does verse 16 say? I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Here Paul is telling us how to live the way that he has been trying to get everybody to understand to, to do, right? So look, this kind of love Paul is talking about does not come naturally. Not only do we resist giving up our own way, we often simply do not know how to love without the rules of the law to guide us. So how will we utilize our freedom in Christ to love each other? Paul points to the only source of power and wisdom beyond ourselves. And what is that? Well, it is the Holy Spirit of God. As we believers know, the Holy Spirit comes to live in the hearts of every one of God's sons and daughters. Paul tells us to use this freedom in Christ to access the power of God's Spirit in our hearts in our everyday lives we are to walk by the spirit and the spirit's power and guidance we are to set aside our our ability or our power if you will 
and rely upon God's power. We need to let the Holy Spirit uh, loose to guide us and to assist us in, in our serving each other in love. In the Holy Spirit's power, by the way, we will have the ability to say no to ourselves. And remember, we are set apart from the world for a reason or for a purpose. As Christians, we should be representing Christ everywhere we go in a manner now that glorifies Christ. Now that is true freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending your Son uh, to die for all of our sins. We thank you for all of the freedoms that, that came from what Christ accomplished at Calvary for us. We pray that you will strengthen and guide us in our own Christian lives to live serving others in love and not ourselves. We pray for a safe and blessed week ahead, and it is in your Son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me here on Grace Time, and I'm glad that you did uh, like and share and comment uh, on this video all you want and uh, on this post. Uh, we I will be back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the good Lord willing. <laughs> and, uh, and may God bless America, and until next time, may God bless you.